All right, guys. So in the previous video of this series, we created this authentication route, and on that we rendered two children component. One was login as well as the register. So overall, the authentication layout is ready, and also we created that this dashboard on which we were rendering two other components. That one was profile component, the other one was post component. For logout, we'll fix this later, but for now that would just work fine. And also we have a public route and we did lot of route splitting in the previous video. So now it's time to go ahead and implement our GraphQL inside our application. And as you can see, my GraphQL playground is already running on port 4000. So now I'm going to simply open it up here. So localhost 4000 slash GraphQL. And we have the access to the GraphQL playground. So for the authentication user, we, I already have this authentication user thing. And let me quickly increase the size of the font. So let's make it 20. And this will be Fira code retina retina. And let me save that. So now we have this Retina Fira code font, which is my favorite font for the editors which I use. So we can see all the queries. So this was for authentication user. And now I'm going to write a mutation for register user here. So mutation register user. And this will be a function which will be taking our these parameters. So let me simply put them. It will take username and which will be of our type string and which is required. Then we have a password to create the user and this will be again of a type string and which is required. Then we have first name. string required and you can check these values I remember it because I have only created this one but you, if you want to check these values you can check this in the docs so here we have our register user mutation and this will take our this response so this is a new input user we can check that schema of this in the schema if I go and check it over here, so there will be a type of input. So let me quickly check that. And that's it. Now we can check those values, whatever we need. Yeah, so we need a username, avatar image, first name, last name and default. So we have a email field also for the user. And this will be of a type of string. Then we have last name field and this will be again of a type string and which is required. Okay, so I have to cut this from here. I put it inside the authenticate user. Actually, this should go here. And avatar image is fine because if we don't want to put any kind of avatar image, our backend database MongoDB will create one for you which is a default one so don't worry about that at all and this will call this mutation called register user so register user this mutation will be called and as i do this register user is there and now this will take new user input and here inside that we'll bind our values this will be an object and here we'll pass our username so this will be our referring to this variable that we have created. So let me copy that, paste it in the same way. We have a password which will be bounded to this password. Then first name field which will be bounded to first name variable that will pass to this mutation last name
and then we have the email field so this will be again bounded to this one and from the back end we want our user back so we'll simply say user and we want all these properties so basically i'm interested in id username avatar image email last name first name from the back end so i'm going to paste that too and also i'm interested in token so which will give me the authentication token let's go ahead and execute this so inside this query variable we just have to pass our uh, user so password is fine that's super secret password we have a first name and my first name will be narendra then we need last name that will be Maurya. and let me quickly show everything then we also need email field so for the email field it will be nandi mandy 9 at the rate hotmail.com and let's go ahead and try this out so for now i'm just gonna get rid of this authentication token because this was not protected mutation so and let me quickly shrink this part and we created our register user so our user is there and token that is also getting so now we are just going to copy this part from here and inside the root i'm going to create a new folder called gql and within that gql i will be creating an index.js file so this will be index.js file and also two more files one will be mutations .js and the second one will be our queries.js so queries.js so all the mutations and queries will go here and since our register user was a mutation so we'll register inside the mutation and in the index whatever we are getting we are exporting all from queries so all the queries whatever we registered out here it will be exported as a default from this folder and export all from mutations so it will be exporting it default from here and now here we are going to register our first mutation so to create graphql based constant you have to bring in something called graph query language so apollo has already installed that for us so we have to import it from graphql tag and now we'll create our constants so export cons so this will be our first constant register user constant and which will be a gql and within that we'll specify our query so this will be our query and we are just exporting this as a constant and as you can see my linters has automatically identified this is a just a graph query language so everything is formatted and linted as well as color syntactically highlighted so you can see everything is working fine and now we will receive this inside our resolver and then we will pass that and we'll bind the values to this so a little bit about the vuex store and how it works i'm not going to touch too much inside this one so this is a basic store that we have and let me save it so it formats well so to manage the state across the component we have a vuex thing inside the vue.js and if i go to my application and let me go to this application and in the console tab if you have already installed this plugin called view dev tools i am using the beta version which is available for view 3 so if you check this view, it will automatically detect that this application is using Vue.js and all the properties. So all the sorts of things inside navbar and everything is defined here. And we can also see we have the access to this Apollo data property. So we'll, we'll use that too. But in the mutation in this form, if I load the base state, currently I don't have any sort of state. Inside of this whole application, we don't have any kind of a state so what i'm gonna do let's say is auth just for the testing and if i write true 
this is a boolean value and as i save it our whole application will be reloading automatically and now this is a base state and if i check that state you can find the piece of state that we registered is being listed here and that is accessible globally throughout this whole application but the problem with this approach is like if we have a lot of components and certain components as our application grows bigger then the problem with this approach is like we might end up having a lot of constants lot of variables and lot of state values to be registered inside and which will often create the confusion so it's better to use modules to manage the state of a particular feature of the application so the way we can do that so let's say for example here authentication is one piece of state for our application so i'm gonna create a new folder inside this store new folder and that will be auth and within that i'm gonna create a new file called index.js so this file will be completely dealing with authentication state of the application uh, let's go ahead and see it in the action so this is a completely empty index dot file and i'm going to create a couple of constants so const state equal to state so this object will be containing the whole state of the application then we have a constant called getters then we have another constant called actions so all the action related to this piece of state will be going inside this object all the functions then we have third one called mutations so if any piece of state is changed we cannot directly change the state we have to list down in the mutation and then we have to change it accordingly so once if anything is mutated the state will automatically know and wherever we are listening for that piece of state inside of the application the component will re-render itself with the new values so that's how the state works so and then we can access that state piece using getters so let's see for example in action how what we can do and also we are going to export default an object and this will contain state getters actions and mutations so this is the export default is auth set it to true so this is one piece of state and if i go to the store we have to bring in that module so i'm gonna import auth from our auth and then we'll register this thing inside the module so this is here and if i save it and go to my application the my application is starting reloading itself and if i check the base state and you still find that auth is there with is auth true but if you go to this this is just saying this is the root state so the problem with this we might end up confusing with the values so it will be better to create separate state for separate components so we can do that too also by just adding another key here name spaced set it to true and if i just do this my application will reload again and now if i click on this base state value so you have this and we can access the auth root so the root has auth inside that but auth we can also access this authentication as a particular thing so that's how we work now it's time to go ahead and bind our register with a action inside the authentication state which will register our user using graphql so let's go ahead and do that too so here firstly let's create a function let's see which will authenticate the user so async or let's not do that way let's do that just by clicking a button for now and later we'll bind with the apollo client and send the data to the backend but for now that would be fine so in here i'm going to create three piece of state 
and one is the user it will be an empty object for now then we have a token which will be from the local storage get item and then we are getting apollo token so remember in the previous video when we are setting up we were using apollo token and that is will be our token so and if that token is there then use that otherwise it, the piece of state will become null now inside the getters i'm gonna return some of the values so that we can listen for the values across the component so user and this will take the state a function and it will return the state dot user so whatever this user is there that will be returned using the getters then is auth this will again take state auth so that's how we'll do it and initially this auth will be false so we'll do that too and this auth is returning this value and then we have a authenticated actually let's make it is auth not that and this will be taking the state and it will return the state dot token and if that token is defined then it will be the value will be true otherwise it will be false and we'll create another variable called auth status for now this one so this is our auth status and this will give me the authenticated value if that token is there it will be true if that token is not there then it will return false and this will be our auth status and that's how we are just returning three piece state from here so now it's time to go ahead and create our register action so we can do that too here for now let's register user is an action name and this will take commit so here we'll be giving all of the context context and then we'll pass the payload whatever we'll be getting from our function while calling this action so let's say user data will be the at action and now this context we are not interested so far we are only interested from this commit of the context and you can put the console log to check whatever different sorts of things we can access from here but that would do the job for now so let me put a console log statement user let me put the context too so that i can explain that ctx that's a context user data console.log context ctx so let's see what happens for now and we'll bind this out with our submit action in the register component that we just created so in order to access this here we have to bring in something from the view x so we'll simply getting our map actions from view x map actions and then we'll register that action here so we'll split map actions and we are interested in the register user and which will be coming from the auth splash register user function so our view.js will automatically know that we want to call this action and now we can use them as a local method of this component so once the user signs up we can use that this dot register user function so this will refer to this and we'll pass that payload over here so this dot user later we'll put the validation and those things here too and let's see what happens so in the console everything is clear nothing is breaking narendra maurya nandi mandy code book inc at gmail.com 
one two three four five six seven eight nine zero and if i click on the register you will find this context has a couple of properties inside that and also we are getting our payload that we passed from the component to the vx store auth module so using these values we'll make an api call there and then get back the token and set it in the local storage and then we can also change the value of the state so these values which we have here inside this auth module we'll change that values using mutations so that it can be reflected throughout the application or the places wherever we are listening for that so let's see in the action so for now i'm just not gonna make that graphql call i just want to commit that mutation so from the context i'm not interested in whole context and also i want to explain just a bit so this commit is just referring to the mutation that we want to commit for the local instance so currently we are in the auth module so this commit will be only limited to the auth module commit then this dispatch will be let's say for example if you want to call any other reaction within that auth module we can dispatch that to here then we have a getter so this getter will also limited to that scope and if you just expand that so whatever the values we were sending back from there we are just getting those values so use as empty state and everything then we have a root getter so root getter is basically something like whatever we have inside the global getters that we can get it using this root getter values and the same way we have a root state so this will give the root state so we have auth state and later if you have something else that will be also listed here so this is also globally available then we have a state this is local state of the of the module so currently token is null that's why we are getting false and there is no user also so let's see in the action and let's try to change these values so the way we can do that we can create a mutation call login user and this will take the state and also the payload if you want to pass that here so this state dot user will become the payload dot user i'll pass that user here in just a bit and auth status will become true actually state dot auth status will become true and once it is reflected we can find that thing inside our application in just a moment and also if you want to set that token also so we'll create another mutation called set token and this will take the state as well as the token so we are getting that token inside that payload and then we'll say state dot token equal to the payload so that we pass here and let me put a comma so that should do the job for now and it will be just fine and now what i'm gonna do here once we call this action instead of this context object i want to extract the commit so this commit is the local commit of this particular module and we can simply call commits using commit function and we'll pass the value here so this is our context and currently we so far we don't have any kind of token so we don't have to worry about that and this commit will become our user data we'll pass that payload as a second parameter so user data and let's save it and see in the action what happens so our application is reloading this is the base state if i refresh we get that and see the values here as i just log in and also let's do one more thing for now we'll create a random token so commit set token and we'll pass some random string okay so this will be received as a payload and that will be set as a token here so let's see in the action what happens this is the base state currently that we have 
and as I go write this 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 0 and let's make that and I said that you will find that our commits have been called so on this part this was the payload which was sent and the token was set and you will find that user is not defined yet actually we were passing that payload.user so we will simply send that at as an object inside that so that's why it was undefined so we are listening for the payload.user and now if I reload this whole base state this application is reloading so now let's make it again and if I register now you can see we have created two commits so if I click on this the payload was this user object was passed and that user has been set to the state as well as now in the getters we are getting our user we can also see here we will find that our token has been passed actually why not token was passed so the state dot token set token okay Yeah, now you can find that token is also set to that so this commit is working fine but now this is just a static value that we are passing over here we want to bring in our Apollo client here in between and whatever the payload we'll get back we'll set that here so that's how we are gonna do that now and the way we can do that whatever this mutation query that we created here we'll bring it inside this so import from to up pre up gql and we'll bring in our register user constant so you can see that it is automatically picked up and now we'll pass that using our Apollo client. So for that also we need to bring our Apollo client instance that we created in the previous video from view Apollo. We'll bring in our Apollo client and now we are going to use them here. So we'll simply say let RESP equal to await and since we are going to use async await because this will take some time from the api so we'll simply say async and then we'll use that await here apollo client dot mutate since it was mutation and here in this we'll pass our mutation object and then we'll simply say mutation value and we'll pass our this register user constant that we created so it will be a gql schema value and we'll pass the second thing called variables and that will be our user data and let me put a console log statement here so far we are not going to change any sort of state so response apollo and here it will be resp and now we might get some lending issues so let me quickly comment this one for right yes lend disable next line and let's save it so this should do the job And let me quickly check the console and let's create a user so John Doe username will be John Doe 
जॉन डो एट दी रेट एग्जाम्पल डॉट कॉम एंड पासवर्ड विल बी वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव सिक्स सेवन एट नाइन जीरो एंड लेट्स रजिस्टर सो नॉट दिस इज द पे लोड रिस्पॉन्स दैट वी गॉट एंड विद इन दैट पे लोड रिस्पॉन्स विल फाइंड दैट आवर न्यू यूजर हैज बीन क्रिएटेड एंड वी आर ऑल्सो गेटिंग बैक आवर यूजर सो विल सेट द टोकन विल स्टोर दैट टोकन लोकली इन द लोकल स्टोरेज एज वेल एज द यूजर वॉट एवर वी आर गेटिंग सो इन साइड दैट लेट मी क्विकली डू दैट टू सो विल रिस्ट्रक्चर दिस रिस्पॉन्स एंड विल गेट आवर डेटा एंड विद इन दैट डेटा वी विल अगेन गेट आवर दिस वैल्यू दिस इज कॉल्ड रजिस्टर यूजर वैल्यू paste it and let me quickly comment this line we no longer need that and inside the login user we'll pass our this user object that we have here so we can do that too we'll pass our register user so this will be the payload and from that payload we are setting only the user part so this should do the job for us and also we are setting the token so we'll pass this token so we will simply say payload dot token and we'll again pass that register user object that we are getting from the apollo and once we are done doing that we also need to set that token in the local storage so set token in local storage in order to persist that token so we we'll simply say local storage dot set item and that token will be will be stored in the name of this apollo token paste it here we we'll simply say register user dot token and this should do the job and once we are done doing that we need to redirect the user redirect the user to the dashboard so in order to use this redirect function here we can have to bring our router that is exported default from this folder from index.js so we'll simply bring in that import actually this will be import router from to up and from router we'll bring in our router and then we'll simply say router dot go to dashboard and this should do all the job we can push that also we can go we can use this go also so let's quickly see in the action again so i'm creating another user called jane do jane do at the rate gmail.com password super secret password and let's register that user and now you can see nothing happened actually okay what happened i really cannot so instead of this go we'll push that user let's use that push dashboard component let's create that another user so we'll simply say sam lester sam underscore lester will be the username sam at the rate gmail dot com password one two three four five six seven eight nine zero and let's register that automatically lo we can load that new state of this authentication now you can see that token is also there we have that user there default user and auth status is also true so based on this value i want to protect these links so once the user is logged in i don't want to show these links anymore i want to show this and once the user logs out 
we'll set that state back to false. So how we can do that? So we can listen for this property inside our navbar components. So in components, layouts, and in the navbar, we can listen for that too. So let me get rid of this. And to do that, we have to bring in from our Vuex state, Vuex package, we need to bring our map getters. And within that computed property of that component, we need to again spread that map getters and we'll pass that here. So now we are listening for this is auth value from the getters. So we can do that too. Is auth. And from auth module, we are interested in this part. And now we can we can use be if else condition in order to render these things so for login i don't want to show them so we if if not authenticated we want to hide these links and we want to show these three links only v if auth is true and let me save that now you no longer find those links here since our user is authenticated but now if I reload this application for now and the, we already have that user logged in and we also we also find the difference. So now you can see if I load the state, we already have that token is auth is true, but we don't find that user at all here. And even this auth status is also false. So what we have to do on the creation of this application component, we have to make another API call in order to get the authenticated user's profile. So in our playground, we'll find that too. Let me quickly shrink them. So this mutation, we no longer need it. And even this query. And if I check in the docs, we'll find that we have a query get authenticated user profile. So this will give me uh, auth user profile so i'm gonna execute that query auth user profile and this was not taking anything else auth user profile i'm interested in the user part so in that user name we we are getting username id actually let me cut them and expand this I'm interested in these parts of the user. So get that to paste it. And now using this token, let me copy this token for now here. And inside the HTTP headers, we'll pass our authorization key, authorization key. And we'll set that token. And if I make this query, we are getting whole user back. So now let's see in the action. Let me quickly copy this auth user query. And we'll register that inside our GraphQL queries. So again, we need to import our GraphQL tag, GQL from GraphQL tag. And then we'll create another constant. So we'll simply export const authenticated user equal to gql within the back text will define our query inside this and now we are exporting it from here and then we will catch that inside our auth module so here we are going to bring in our authenticated user and as I do this not everything is working fine currently I'm using relative paths later we'll replace it with the add date alias symbols and we'll create another action async get auth user and this will again take commit and now we'll again use our Apollo client and here we are not going to pass any kind of payload so we can leave it 
uh, we can leave the second argument as it is and we'll simply say let data from that data we are interested in this value called auth user profile so this will have our our variables so let me copy that paste it and we'll again use our apollo client dot uh, based on the token we'll see mutate so here we are going to query function and this will take parameters so in, inside that I'll call this query and we'll pass that our that constant that we just brought in so which contains our query GraphQL query and also we need not to pass our user and this will have our user inside that so we just have to pass that as a payload inside this thing so we'll put that commit login user and here we have that auth user so this is having payload call user and inside that we'll be passing this value that we are getting from the back end and we will check here and in case of any error we'll log out that user that will deal in the further and now once this app is created so inside this app of the component a main root app component where whole application will be mounted we'll call that mutation here on the created hook so async created and we'll simply say this dot dollar store and we are interested actually we'll dispatch an action so we can call any action by saying dispatch and we are interested in auth slash get auth user action that we have created paste it let me save it now we'll find one error and i know about that in just a moment i'll tell you so let me reload this app and console log statement we'll just see an error and i don't know why it's not worked let me clear that async created the start dollar store dispatch action auth get user inside our created hook and we'll put that await here sometimes it picks up sometimes doesn't why this action is not called so this dot dollar store dispatch action or get user and let's put let me put await this will take some time now it's reloading Oh, it's not making that call inside our created hook we call this method actually my bad we have to dispatch like this so let me reload we have valid token and this is making GraphQL call you can see we are getting this preview response 
in the response we'll find that we are getting error the message you must be authenticated in order to access this information and now why is this happening since we have a valid token stored and you can see that valid token inside our local storage that we were setting while creating that user we have a valid token inside that local storage and now why is this is happening why we are not able to get our users so that's the question and it was like not a very hard thing to figure out it was a very simple thing if you check in the headers you'll find that we have bearer bearer twice appended to this thing so by default this apollo client already knows that we are going to use bearer token so it will automatically append bearer and now we have to just figure it out why it will happen so once we are setting up the token here we have to split that just a simple javascript and we'll split with the space it will give the array and we'll be interested in the first value so let me log out from our applications tab I'm gonna get rid of this token and let me reload so now user is no more authenticated and now we'll find login register route okay so let's go ahead and create a user Janet Sean Janet one two three Janet one two three are delete gmail dot com password will be one two three four five six seven eight nine zero and let's register that and we will find that our token is being set here without the bearer and now in the console let me clear everything and if I reload now you'll find that we'll get our authenticated user properly so now it made the GraphQL query call and now it is sending only the bearer part in the preview also we are getting our user back and we set that payload inside of UX state also you can simply say see that login user and we have that user object here so whatever the data of that user was there now it is here and we can also see our routes are also working fine so I think that's it for this video in the next video we'll start looking into the login as well as the logout functionality to our application and in the further videos we'll start looking how we can do our CRUD operations using these tokens and authenticated and access controls. So thank you guys. If you like this video, just leave this video with a thumbs up and that's it. Thank you guys. Bye.